top of Iraq protects from harm. An ancient Buddhist chant rings out for luck. Some 500 riders will compete in the first race. Parents on horseback swell their ranks. By tradition, they circle clockwise at a staging area near the finish line. The running of the race is not yet at hand. The starting point lies more than 15 miles away in the open steppe. To reach that point at a walk will take the racers some three hours. Which leaves time to kill for everyone else. Nomads like Hang Medic take the moment to catch up with old friends and trading partners. For people who live much of the year in relative isolation, there's also the irresistible allure of new faces. For now, small talk belies the drama that's erupting miles away. As 500 horses reach the starting point and the race begins. Long before they can see the racers, spectators crowd the finish line. According to myth, the dust kicked up by winning horses showers happiness and prosperity on all those it touches. Front runners have been galloping for nearly 30 minutes. By Western standards, this might qualify as an extreme sport. But these are the descendants of Genghis Khan, who forged the largest land empire ever known on horseback. The blue sash of victory goes to the first five horses. A flash of green tells Hang Medic his granddaughter has placed. But a riderless horse sends him off in search of his youngest grandson. After an initial flurry, racers trickle in for another hour. Herd instinct alone will keep a horse going, 
even one that lacks the fitness and conditioning required for a long-distance run. For some, the strain is too much. When a horse dies on the racetrack, the trainer is dishonored. But the child who has lost a beloved pet reaps only heartbreak. fall near the starting point dashed the hopes of Hang Medic's grandson. His horse is safe, his bruises minor, but his six-year-old pride will sting until the races are over. Nadam concludes in the National Stadium with a parade of champions. Hang Medic is twice a winner. His grandchildren take two of his horses through their victory laps. A herald sings the praises of the winning horses. Medals and mare's milk do them honor. But for each little rider, the highlight is a kiss from the president of Mongolia. No other nation makes more of the horse. Fiery steed, faithful servant. He is all good things to the Mongolian people. In return, they may succeed in saving the last truly wild horse on Earth. Before the rise of civilization, his kind ranged throughout Asia and Europe. Alert and aggressive, they were elusive prey with their camouflage of tawny coat, their upright two-toned mane. These horses were already rare in 1878, when Russian explorer Nikolai Shavalsky returned from Mongolia. He carried a skull and hide that would prompt the announcement of a new species. In a race for specimens, stallions were slaughtered to subdue mares. Mares were killed to secure foals, Dozens died en route to zoos and animal collectors in the West. Shavalsky's horses were last sighted in the wild in the 1960s. A decade later, fewer than 300 survived, in captivity only. This endangered species was declared extinct in the wild. In 1992, 16 Shavalsky horses from European reserves touched down in Ulan Bator. Their journey was the crowning achievement of Dutch conservationists and Mongolian authorities. Transports were blessed with mare's milk as the horses arrived at a nature reserve established in their honor. The homecoming delighted local people. Their name for the horses is Taki. The word also means spirit. Today, some 80 free spirits roam 120,000 acres under watchful eyes.
park rangers closely track the animal's health and behavior. Breeding success is high. Two generations have been born in the reserve. To increase the gene pool, horses are still brought in from the west. But prospects for a self-sustaining population are promising. Mongolia's preservation of the Taki seems a fitting tribute to an animal who has given us so much. Domesticated, the horse revolutionized our world. But in the process, he was also transformed. The legendary Arab is just one of more than 150 breeds, some honed for work, some for sport, others for sheer shell. Mm -hmm.